This is lesson 6.1, Introduction to Linear Transformations. That's what this whole chapter is about, linear transformations. In this first lesson, we're going to look at just kind of what is a linear transformation. We'll define it. We'll talk about this idea of mapping uh, pre-images to images. We'll get into some properties. And then the, the rest of the chapter, we'll just build on that, looking at, at other properties, rules, uh, theorems, things of that nature. So to start, let's just kind of go to a, a high level here and talk about what a linear transformation is, uh, especially in the context of some of the things that we've been learning in this course. So in front of us, we've got some, some ovals here, and these are meant to represent uh, vector spaces. So on the, the left-hand side, I'm going to call this vector space V. On the right-hand side, I'm going to call this vector space W. So obviously in V, we've got all these different vectors V, and, uh, and, and these vectors are going to map to vectors in W. Now, keep in mind that as we talk about linear transformations, we're really just talking about a function. So functions we know have domains and ranges and other properties involved. And, and so in the same way, we can think of V as being our domain and W as being our not range. All right. Got you on that one. Uh, it's actually going to be called our codomain, and, and here's why. When I take a vector from V and I map it into W, not all vectors in W have to be mapped to. So when I map from V into W, like this, right? There's a there's a vector W that it maps to, but there's all these other vectors that might not get mapped to ever from V. And so we're going to call W our codomain, but specifically the, the subset within W that holds all of the vectors that get mapped to, that is called our range. Okay? All right, so uh, also in V, we're going to call these vectors our pre-images. And in W, we are going to call these our images. So pre-images mapped to images. Uh, just kind of no notationally, um, we think of, of transformations uh, as, as just kind of T for transformation. This is a, a, a symbol that you're going to see a lot or, or kind of symbols. Uh, we're going to write T colon, which just means such that, V arrow, which means maps to W. So this is T such that V maps to or into W. So that's just really kind of at a, like a real high level what a linear transformation is. So to make this a little more concrete, let's just do a quick example and look at how we go from pre-image to image and image back to pre-image. So it says for any vector v given by v1, v2, and r2, we're going to define our transformation as mapping from this, the two space to the two space, r2 to r2, by this rule, okay? So that the, the top part is just basically telling us we're going to take a vector space in the two space, we're going to take a vector space in the two space, we're going to map from one to the other. This part though, this is our rule. This is how we're going to do it. So we're going to transform the vector v1, v2 by adding v1 and v2 to get the first element and then multiplying v1 by 2 and subtracting v2 to get our second element. It's as simple as it might actually look. All we're going to do here is to find the transformation on the vector 2, 1. So that's our vector in V. Mapping that to W, we are simply going to add uh, V1 and V2. We're going to take 2 plus 1. And then we're going to take 2 times V minus V2. So 2 times 2 minus 1. And that is going to give us the vector 3, 3. So 2, 1, that's our vector in V. 3, 3 is our vector in W. So we're mapping 2, 1 in V to 3, 3 in W. Again, based on that particular rule uh, above there. All right, so that, again, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. What if I want to go backward, though? What if I know the image and I want to find the pre-image that maps to that image? So in this case, we've got the pre-image. Uh, we want to find the pre-image of W equals 1, negative 1. Well, again, we've got the rule. We know the rule says that if I take v1 plus v2, that's going to give me the first element in the vector in w. And if I take 2v1 minus v2, that's going to give me the second element of the vector in w. So in other words, v1 plus v2 is going to equal 1, and 2v1 minus v2 is going to equal 
negative one. And now I have a system of equations that I can solve. So if we add these together, we get 3v1 equals zero. So v1 is zero, which means that v2 has to be one. So that tells me then that the pre-image, which is the vector v, is zero, one. So zero, one in, vec in the vector space v maps to uh, one, negative one in the vector space of w. All right, let's talk mathematically then about what a linear transformation is. So the definition is let V and W be vector spaces. Okay, we talked about that. And here's that, that uh, kind of that notation again that I talked about. So this again just says that it's a transformation that maps V into W. And if this is a linear transformation of V into W, uh, when the two properties below are true for all U and V in V and for any scalar C. So in order to be a linear transformation, these two things have to hold true. Number one is basically saying if I take two vectors in V and I add them together and then take the transformation, apply the transformation, that should be the same as taking uh, applying the transformation to the uh, vectors individually and then adding them together. The second one is, is similar. It says I should be able to take a vector in V, multiply it by a scalar, and then apply the transformation, or apply the transformation first to the vector and then multiply by the scalar. I should get the same thing regardless of the order that I do these in. So this is the definition of a linear transformation is when these two things hold. So anytime we wanna show that something is a linear transformation, we have to show that these two things are true. All right, then we've got a, a theorem that basically just lists some properties about transformations. Uh, the first three kind of similar, at least uh, two and three especially, kind of similar to what we just looked at. But number four, I, I wanna kind of just, uh, point this one out because this is gonna lead into our next example. This is basically saying that if, if V is C1 times V1 plus C2 times V2 and so on, in other words, if V is a linear combination of vectors in V, then the transformation of that vector v is equal to the transformation of the linear combination. And that is also equal because of the definition above is equal to the scalar times the transformation of v1 plus the scalar times the transformation of v2 and so on. So in other words, the, the transformation of a vector is equal to a transformation of the linear combination of vectors that make that vector is equal to the transformation of the parts, the individual parts of that linear combination where we take it a step further and can even pull C out front, okay? So why, why that, why is that important? Well, let's take a look at the next example and, and apply that idea. So it's, we're gonna, so it says uh, let uh, T be the transformation that maps from R3 to R3 uh, such that T of one, zero, zero equals three, negative one, two, T of zero, one, zero is one, four, three, and T of zero, zero, one is negative two, zero, two. So we've got three rules here uh, that are telling us that, that if we take the, the vector one, zero, zero, that's gonna map to three, negative one, two, and so on. And we're gonna use that to find the transformation of T one, negative three. So that's our pre-image. We're gonna find the vector that it maps to in W using this information that we have above. Well, again, based on, on this property four above, um, that kind of gets into this idea of, of linear combinations. Let's go ahead and let's write uh, V as a linear combination. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna take this, this two, one, negative three, and using these three vectors, the, the one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, one, let's write two, one, negative three as a linear combination of those vectors. So that's gonna be two times one, zero, zero, plus one times zero, one, zero, minus three times zero, zero, one, okay? Now why did we do that? Because now we're gonna apply that, that fourth property. So apply property number four. In other words, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now do the transformation of two, one, negative three that property tells us that to, to do this transformation, I can take the transformation of the linear combination 
but I can break up that linear combination. I can take the transformation of each vector in that linear combination with the scalar in front. So in other words, I'm going to think of this as 2 times the transformation of 1, 0, 0 plus 1 times the transformation of 0, 1, 0 minus 3 times the transformation of 0, 0, 1. Okay, so just following just up here on, on property 4, I'm just following that last step of property 4. Well, if we make our substitutions now, the transformation of 1, 0, 0 is the vector 3, negative 1, 2. So these are, right, these are Vs. These are Vs in vector space V. These are Ws. And what we want is a vector in W. So we're going to take 2 times 3, negative 1, 2 plus 1 times 1, 4, 3. Obviously, don't really need the 1 there, but just to remind us that that's the, the C value. And then minus 3 times... Uh, negative 2, 0, 2. Negative 2, 0, and 2. And so simplifying that uh, gives us uh, 6, 7, gives us 13, 2, and 1. Okay? So that's, that's why that property is important. It allows us to apply uh, that, that property to a situation like this where we may know information about the mapping, and we can use that to perhaps find other uh, image, pre-images to images in that situation. All right, well, let's move on here, and uh, let's do another example. This time, though, let's get into some matrices and look at how, how that works. So it says, define the function t, again, mapping from R2 now to R3. So notice we're actually mapping from one dimension into a different dimension. And we're going to define this by t of v, so the transformation of the vector v, as being a matrix A times V, where the matrix is negative 2, 4, 0, 1, 3, negative 1. V, because we're starting in the 2 space, right? So this is a, a vector in the 2 space, is going to be V1, V2. And part A says find T of V when V is 1, negative 2. Well, again, very, very simply, because this is V1, this is V2, we're simply going to plug those in and, and find our, our uh, image in W. So T of V... So this is part A, T of V, uh, is the same as just taking A times V. In this case, A being negative 2, 4, 0, 1, and 3, negative 1. And multiplied by V1, V2, which is 1, negative 2. Now, remember, we're, we're starting in, in a 2 space. We're mapping into a 3 space. And here's why this happens. When we perform this matrix multiplication, We've got negative 2 times 2, or 1 is negative 2, plus negative 8 is negative 10. Next row, 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. Last row, 3 plus 2 is 5. So because there are three rows in our matrix, when we multiply, we end up with three rows in our new matrix. This is now in R3. So we started in R2, and we're now in R3 with our, our, in our, our W, with that matrix. So, in other words, the, the transformation of 1, negative 2 is negative 10, negative 2, 5, mapping from 2 to the 3 space. All right, now let's go to part B, which says show that T is a linear transformation from R2 into R3. So this is where we, again, we have to show those two uh, parts of the definition. We have to show that these two things up here hold true. Now, I'm gonna, as we go through this, you might be wondering, where are you pulling this stuff from? And Because I'm gonna do some stuff that almost looks like, well, you're just, you're just kind of doing that just because you can. We're actually pulling, I'm gonna pull properties way back from chapter two when we talked about some properties of matrices. And so that's where this is, is coming from. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to show that, that t of u plus v is equal to t of u plus t of v. Well, based on our, our rule, taking the, or transforming a vector, in this case a sum of two vectors, is multiplying that by a matrix. So again, back in chapter two, we learned that when, you, when we do something like this, we can actually break this apart and we can multiply these separately and add them together. 
Well, again, if we look at our rule, a of v is t of v, which also means then that a of a times u is t of u. So this is just t of u plus t of v. So t of u plus v equals t of u plus t of v. That's our, our first part of our definition. Now we have to do the same thing for scalars. So we've got t of c times u. And again, using the, the rule above, that's the same as just taking a times the quantity c times u. And again, going back to chapter 2, we had a property that told us that when we've got something like this, we can pull that scalar out front. And then this is a, to a times u. I don't know why I put parentheses there. We don't really need them. But a times u is t of u. And so uh, what I end up with is c of, or c times, t of u. So again, that idea that we can pull that scalar out front, that's the second part of our definition. Both hold true. Therefore, this is a linear transformation uh, from R2 to R3. All right, well, we're just about there. Just a couple more things to do here. Let's talk about um, a little bit more about this idea of, of, of uh, mapping with matrices. So it says, let A be an M by N matrix. The function T uh, defined by T of V equals the matrix A times the vector V is a linear transformation from R of N into R of M. Okay, so think about when we talk about uh, matrices, right? We talk about matrices of having size M by N. So notice that we're mapping from basically the number of columns to the number of rows. In order to conform to matrix multiplication with an M by N matrix, N by 1 matrices represent the vectors in Rn, and M by 1 matrices represent the vectors in Rm. Okay, so this is just a, a lot to basically say exactly what I just said before, that when you've got a matrix, like if we look at our last example, we started here with a 3 by 2 matrix. The number of columns was 2, the number of rows was 3. We were mapping from R2, the number of columns, to R3, the number of rows. So anytime you're working with matrices and linear, uh, com or linear uh, transformations like this, this rule is going to hold true. All right. So with that said, let's finish up with one last example. It says, consider the linear transformation, T, such that R, uh, the N space basically maps to the M space, defined by T of V equals A times V. Find the dimensions of Rn and Rm for the linear transformation represented by each matrix. All right, so very, very simply then for this first one, again, because this is a 3 by 2 matrix, that tells me that the, the transformation that we'd be applying is going to be from R2 to R3. Now, again, kind of the, the why of this, like we saw in the last example, if I take that matrix 4, negative 2, negative 3, 1, and 5, 0. Now we're in R2, right? We're starting in R2, so I'd be multiplying it by V1, V2, just like we did in the last example. That's going to give me 4, you know, 4 V1, negative 2, V2. That's going to give me a value. I'm just going to call that U1. Second row times V1, V2. That's going to give me another value, another row. I'm going to call it U2. And 5v1, 0v2, that's going to give me a third value. We'll just call that u3. And so again, where I started in R2, I'm now finishing in R3. All right. And then B, same idea. We have a 2 by 2 matrix. So that means that our transformation is going to be mapping from R2 to R2. Okay. And again, very, very simply, just to kind of show you the why, just to really hammer this home, we're starting in 2, so we'd have a, a V1, a V2. And when I multiply, obviously I've got a row 1, 2, negative 3 times V1, V2. That's going to give me a value, U1. And when I multiply the second row times V1, V2, that's going to give me another value. I'll just call it U2. And so again, here we started in R2, and we are finishing in R2. Okay. So that's it for this lesson. Uh, just, you know, big thing here is really just uh, especially understanding how to map from a, a pre-image to an image, how to find the pre-image from the image. Uh, and then in the next lesson, we're going to just go a little bit deeper into some other properties 
uh, some more theorems and, and things about linear transformations. So I will see you in that next lesson.